Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I've actually been out here doing a little bit of work on the outdoor studio, um, kind of changed some things up, upgraded a few things, and getting ready for the season because tomorrow night is supposed to be the dress rehearsal for our Dallas Cowboys. Uh, my man E2 Blue will be in the house. I'm not sure if DMV is going to be here tomorrow night or not. He's supposed to chime in tonight on our live stream. We'll also be watching the Washington football team. So tune in early tonight for our live stream. We'll start out at 745. So if you can, leave me a comment below. Let me know if the sound quality is better or worse than usual. If it's loud enough, if it needs to be louder and so on. Just, just leave a comment. Like I said, I'm doing a few, few things that are a little different. In the meantime, it's kind of interesting. You know, let me go ahead and kill the music. It's kind of interesting what happened with Jalen Hurts last night. Um, listening to Philly 500 and, and watching the game cast last night, knowing that Jalen Hurts started warming up and everything, getting ready to play, and then mysteriously got sick to the point where he needed to go to the hospital and get checked out. And then having their coach go through and kind of like, uh, you know, whatever. It, it just sounds like there's something more, something amiss here. Uh, this may be one of those we're baffling them with bullshit type of uh, answers because it just did not make any sense whatsoever. Anyway, that's not our problem. Now, here's where it gets to be interesting. And, you know, when I listened to Eagle fans last night, they, they went on board with, oh, you know, it's just preseason. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, going into that game, we kept hearing, this is the dress rehearsal for the season. This is us trying to get everything kind of together and feel good. The next week's game is kind of like the consolation bowl where we won't play too many people and get hurt. And this is my question for our Cowboys. Because here's what we got from Mike McCarthy this morning, that um, Tyron Smith should be playing, Lyle Collins should be playing, that his neck issue isn't really an issue, and that he's still you know fine. So as far as the offensive line goes, you're going to see the starters. You'll see Tony Pollard out there. You won't see Zeke. You won't see Dak. You might see Amari Cooper. On the defensive side of the ball, D-Law won't play, but everybody else on the defense will. So is this a dress rehearsal game for the Dallas Cowboys? And I understand the whole philosophy of it doesn't matter because these are just backups. However, to me, it does matter how the backups respond and how the backups play. Because I look at the Eagles, and it looked like they literally rolled over and died. I understand that last year, because of injuries that were unforeseen, we had a rookie free agent have to start for 13 games last season in Terrence Steele. I understand that anybody can be lost, like Tyron Smith and Lyle Collins. And if you don't have guys who have some experience and, and can play, you're in trouble. And so I need to see at least some signs of life. When I look at Kamara, Kamara, who you don't really expect to make the roster, had 225 pounds, an outside edge rusher. That guy still went out there and competed. He still went out there and played. So I don't want to hear stuff that, oh, it's just backups and, and so on. No, I, I, I'm sorry. Joe Flacco was a backup. He may end up being the starter. Hurts has only got five games under his belt. There's no guarantee that he's going to be good. So to me, it does matter how these guys play. It does matter if they compete as opposed to looking like they just completely lost. And that's what we actually got from the Eagles, at least yesterday. Again, not my problem. If you guys feel good and confident about what you saw last night, well, well God bless you then. I'm happy for you. Me, I want to see some signs of life from my people um, completely. Now it was interesting. If you, <laughs> excuse me, forgive me here. Did not mean to sneeze on you guys. It was interesting listening to Dan Quinn's, um, press conference. We know the key word for Dan Quinn is fast as well as physical. I've played this before. I told you guys, I was going to make you this clip make you sick of hearing this clip. But this was Dan Quinn with the Legion of Boom after they destroyed the Denver Broncos in the Super Bowl. 
And it sounds like the same Dan Quinn we hear with the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, we knew whatever conditions were going to come up tonight, we really uh, the, one of the main things we want to do was just play at our style. And uh, we did that tonight. That was one of the things going in uh, all year long. We're fast, we're physical, and uh, we have a real style about how we play. I thought that came out tonight. Coach, like this again? I certainly hope so. Uh, could be more uh, proud to be part of that unit that, that plays, you know, with an aggressive style. We talked about out hitting people in terms of how we want to affect the quarterback and even checking the ball down the way we want to tackle. Uh, we wanted to win with fundamentals. And uh, you know, our guys work really hard in that fashion. Uh, it's something that our coaching staff and the players, you know, we talk tackling, we talk turnovers, really every day that we practice. And, uh, and that's what came to mind. What did you tell you? Well, we certainly have uh, you know, so much respect for the, their offense the way they did. So I was not surprised that we played well. Uh, we've had terrific weeks of practice and preparation. So. Going into it, we were healthy and really felt like we were going to play fast and physical. We, we prepared for no huddle for two weeks. And uh, if you give those group of guys two weeks to prepare, uh, the coaches and those players, I think you're going to like the results. What did you tell your players after the game, Coach? Really just how proud I was to be part of the unit. And uh, the thing that I was most impressed about is that we really played in a style and fashion that we're accustomed to. We're fast, we're physical, and we played this game on our terms. And that was one of the things we went into the game saying. And for us to go and play it in that way, uh, you know, and have it come true in that way, it was awesome. Where do the Seahawks run the old time greatest defense? I'll let you guys decide that. I you know, couldn't be more fired up to be part of our unit and the attitude and the way that we play. So I'll, I'll leave that to you guys. Coach Carroll has been, uh, he's been huge for my career. I think just um, how to feature the players and uh, let's find what a player can do well and let's accent that. And uh, that would be one of the many things he's taught me. What did that first front? What did you anticipate it would be that one side and look like the most dominated their I don't know about that, but I certainly know our guys know how to rush. And uh, that was one of the things we knew when you face a quarterback like him, you better be able to affect him. We didn't talk about sacks or hits. We talked about can we get him off the spot. And uh, we knew in certain coverages there was going to be times when he got the ball out and under 2.2, 2.3, which is hard for a rusher. You know, sometimes it can be if it's at 2.6 or 2.7, that's when you can get the hit. So. Uh, we knew they'd have to deal with us, you know, in terms of you know, I was fired up for Clem and what he was able to do, and Cliff and Michael have been doing that for a while. So uh, it was just another example of how, you know, we have a really deep front, and some games you have to play real hard ball. It's going to be a running team, and then there's tonight games like tonight where it's going to be more featured pass rush. What did that think? Okay, so here's the thing: if you listen to this very carefully, um, you will find everything that Dan Quinn is trying to do with the Cowboys right now. He talks about having depth. Okay. He talks about speed. He talks about physicality. All things that he is trying to implement with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, when you listen to him talking about their installs from the, his press conference earlier, uh, excuse me, last night, he talks about how the installs are there, how the guys have actually taken up to it how fast that they're getting, how physical that they're getting, as well as matchups, you know, where you take a guy and use the things that they are good with. So, and, and too many times, this is where I look at the pass regime, and I hate to always keep knocking on Jason Garrett and things, but I think about Rico Gathers. I know Rico Gathers will always be that guy in my mind, I wonder what if. Rico Gathers at about 255, ran down the field like a gazelle because he was a basketball player, could jump and catch the football. The Cowboys said, no, we need you to block. We need you to put on weight. He was okay at blocking, but then he could no longer run down the field the way he used to. It looked like it was late. In fact, it looked painful. So instead of using what he could do, they said, we need you to do something different and you lost him completely. This is where Dan Quinn is going to take people, including Jalen Smith. And this is why I think we might actually see a, a Jalen Smith that will actually play well. Because they're going to find out what you do well, and we're going to be deep, deep enough that we're going to look at different games and different matchups, and we're going to be able to be like a chameleon and blend into what you are doing and come after you. This is where you look at some games. It may be that you've got Randy Gregory on the outside. Other games, you may end up changing up and saying, we need a Dorrance Armstrong or, or we need a heavier package and we're going to put bigger people in there. 
And this is the thing that's going to keep other teams guessing, and you have to like it. So the question is, is is this actually going to be a dress rehearsal for the Dallas Cowboys? Are they really going to try and show some more and really try and get to what's closer of being the starting lineup? Well, we definitely know it will be in the offensive line. We know that the defense are probably going to play more of their starters, with the exception of Demarcus Lawrence, uh, than they would um, than, than they will be in the offense, mainly because of injury. So we can't wait to see what this is what this is like, and I hope we don't see what we saw from the Eagles yesterday, which was they literally just rolled over and died. And and I'm, I'll be honest with you, if we look like the Eagles did last night against the Texans, then it's time to hit the panic button. Uh, to the Eagles' defense, I believe that New England is going to come out and be one of the top teams this year. Um, to me, I looked at what happened last year as a strategy by Bill Belichick of basically gaming the system. He took advantage of basically players being able to sit out for a year, got himself cap relief because, of course, eating the money from Tom Brady and, and having bloated contracts, got himself an easier schedule, and got higher draft picks, and now is reloaded and ready to roll. And I, I will say that I believe that the Eagles are a better team than what they showed last night. Don't sleep on it. Don't think that the Eagles are just completely a trash team. Uh, I still think they are somebody to worry about. And so with that being said, hopefully the system is working okay, and um, we will be ready to rock and roll. I, I may actually do our live stream for the uh, game tonight out here just as another test. But uh, as always, you know how we roll. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to